Hello, everybody. Welcome to Stampin' Peace with Mary Nabe in Westerville, Ohio. It's a suburb of Columbus. Yes, I am a Buckeye. And um, I'm happy to be here with you tonight, and I'm happy that you have joined me. I have a new class that I will be um, announcing, well, I'm announcing it now, but the email will go out tomorrow, and that is with the Pansy Petals bundle. You'll And you will receive the Pansy Bundle as Pansy Patch Bundle, that's the stamp set and the dies, as part of the class kit. Or you will have the option to purchase just the um, card supplies without the bundle. And of course, I always have a PDF tutorial only option. Those members of my team, the Mary's Mary Stampers, M-E-R-R-Y, um, will get this PDF tutorial free. That is one of the perks of being on my Stampin' Up! team is that um, team members, I do share with team members, my um, class tutorials free. So um, just a nice little perk for them to show them I appreciate them. All right, so very quickly, here are the cards that will be made in that Pansy Petals class. You'll make two each of four designs. So they're really beautiful, fun cards. Um, they each have a different sentiment. So we're using up um, many of the stamps that are in that Pansy Patch stamp set, in addition to using the dies that coordinate. For tonight's project, I want to draw your attention to page 171 of our current annual catalog, our new catalog. It is not often, in fact, this may be the first time, I'm not 100% sure, but as far as I can remember, this is the first time that Stampin' Up! has included designer series paper as a host option. So in other words, when you put in a large order where you would get Stampin' Rewards, like we just talked about, um, and Stampin' Rewards start at $150. So a lot of times I have customers that will kind of um, just keep their running wish list going. And then when they reach that $150, they um, place their order with me. A lot of people just place smaller orders all along, but some choose to hold and do a larger order because then they get Stampin' Rewards, which means free product. The host stamp sets and this Pattern Party Designer Series paper are only available to those who reach party sales of 150 or more, whether that be your own order or a combination of orders if you're hosting a, a party or workshop with me, or simply if you're gathering orders from a group of family and friends. Then you can spend some of your Stampin' Rewards on these three stamp sets and or this um, designer series paper. It's one of those super mega packs. So it has 48 sheets and you can use $18 of Stampin' Rewards to get this pack. It's amazing. It's a $30 value, so it's a wonderful, wonderful perk with Stampin' Rewards. But I wanted to show it to you just because I don't think the, pe the picture in the catalog really does it justice. Again, there's 48 sheets, so there's 12 different sheets and you get four of each. So here's one. Just lots of fun, colorful patterns here. I love this one. Just beautiful, bright colors. Isn't this fun? You know, when I was going through this, this pink camouflage, or, or not camouflage really, but pink um, animal print, I thought would be so cute with the hats off dye, the little ball cap. Um, just, I love that some stripe, 
this bright, bright green, some misty moonlight with flowers, big flowers, and I love the polka dots. The screams party to me. Now on the opposite side, because you know Stampin' Up! always does the opposite side in a different, um, different pattern or print or color, the back side of all of these are black and white. And I know many of you, like me, enjoy working with black and white. Um, I think it's fun just creating black and white or doing black and white with a pop of color. And then the other thing you can do with these is color on them with your Stampin' Blends. So those of you who love the True Love Designer Series paper that's about to retire from our mini catalog, this is something that I know you will love just as much. And we're going to be using this in today's project. I have a 3D project for you today. I'm going to show you how to make this adorable box. It's six inches by th six inches long by three inches high and two and a half inches deep. Um, so it's a fun cookie box. It might be fun for um, jewelry, little trinkets, treats, uh, probably all kinds of things. Um, even maybe um, gift cards or coupons from the kids to grandparents, that sort of thing. I'm sure you can think of many, 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 many more uses. But this box is made from one sheet of designer series paper. So let me show you how I did that, and then we'll also make a pretty tag to go with it. I am going to, once again, well, who's watching? I don't see any comments. I'm not sure if you're not commenting or if I'm just not seeing them. Let me see if I can pull them up a different way. Hmm. Okay. I have a feeling you're all commenting. <laughs> if you are, please do so. Um, if you're watching, please comment throughout. I would love it if you would share the video as well and we can get some more people to join in on the fun. But I'm going to choose this paper, this black and white pattern, and... I need my paper trimmer, and I'm going to start out by scoring with this. Now, if you have a score pal or um, simply score tool, like Stampin' Up! cells, you can use that just as easily. I don't know why I can't see any details or any, uh, hmm. Hold on, I'm trying to, no, it's not letting me see comments tonight. So hopefully, please continue to comment um, throughout the video. Hopefully, once the live has ended, I'll be able to read your comments. And that way, if you have any questions or um, anything you want to contribute to this, um, I'll be able to read those and respond to questions, etc. So... The first thing you're going to do is score at three inches and nine inches. You're then going to turn that designer series paper. And now we're going to do some more scoring. We're going to start by scoring at one inch then three and a half, six and a half, and nine inches. Now, at this point, it can be a little bit tricky because with these patterns, it can be hard to see the score lines, etc. But to make it a little bit easier, I'm just going to 
fold on all of those score lines. I do need to cut a couple pieces away. And then I also need to cut some straight lines that we'll use to form the box. But the first thing I'm going to do is fold on all of my score lines. So we had two in the one direction and then we had four going the opposite direction. So now, when we have this um, one inch strip across the top or across one end, I want this for you to put this in the top position. I want this to be at the top. This is going to be that closure on the lid of our box. It can be tucked in or you can leave it out just like that or you can make any kind of closure um, you want with that, a magnet or a Velcro or um, just a little baker's twine, whatever you like. So that should be at the top. Then we're going to, I'm gonna use a pencil and I'm just gonna mark this little triangle and uh, not triangle, rectangle, and the rectangle, larger rectangle below it, and the same thing on the other side, because I'm going to be cutting those sections away. Basically, it's this that I'm cutting away. I know you can't see the score lines. It's hard. Before I do that, though, I'm going to cut on these three inch lines and the nine inch score lines. To make sure I'm going to the right place. So here, and I'm going to, there's a score line going right across here. I want to make sure I have this correct. Yes. Okay, so one, two, three. I'm going to the third score line down, or across, I should say. So I'm starting at three inches, and I'm cutting right over that score line, and I want to go to this one, two, three, the third score line, which is sitting at just about six and a half inches. So I'm gonna pull this down. And remember, we have those lines on either side of the holder of the cutting blade. And I know I can line up those lines with my score line so I get it to just the right place. Now I'm going to scoot it down to the nine inch mark. And I'm going to do the same thing. Here's my six and a half the score line that sits at six and a half, and that's where I'm cutting to. I apologize if you see the top of my head, but it's easier for me to look over it a little bit. There, so most those cutting lines are uh, went right to that score. Now I'm going to flip this around, and I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm only going to go to the first score line across on this side. I'm at three inches and I'm coming down to the first score line going across and that is also at three inches. I'm going to slide my designer series paper over to the nine inch mark and once again do the same thing. I'm cutting down to the first score line. Now it feels like I need to change my blade here. And I'm going right to that first score line at three inches. So I'm going to flip this around because I always want, it's helpful to always have, um, you know, one distinct part of your designer series paper always at the same place. So you keep, mentally keep in your head which direction everything is going. So this is the top and that's going to be that front flap of my box. I told you we'd be cutting out these four sections, cutting them away. So I'm ready to do that now. 
and I'm just going to cut right on the score line that's already there. This is probably the most difficult part just because you have a lot going on with cutting lines and scoring lines, but once you get these two, um, get to the step and remove these two, I should, really it's four sections, but two pieces of designer series paper, it's going to make complete sense how you put your box together. So let me show you before I actually add any adhesive. The box goes together like this. Pull up that flap, pull from the back, and it has the lid going over it, okay? So let that lay flat, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, I'm going to use my, well, I could use Stampin' Seal Plus, or I can use tear and tape. Both of them work very well. So use whatever you have or prefer, but um, know that you need a very strong adhesive. And I'm just gonna work on that front panel. I'm not gonna put any adhesive on the back panel just yet. I'm also gonna go across the top a bit. If you don't have either one of these adhesives, the Tear and Tape or the Stamp and Seal Plus, go ahead and use your multi-purpose glue and just put um, a small line of glue all the way around. So now I'm going to pull up this side and I wanna match up these edges as well as my corner. So these are, you can see I've matched these up nicely, nice and smooth, and my corner matches up nicely. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Remember the only place I put adhesive was on this front panel. Line up those edges and then that corner. And now I'm going to put adhesive on the two back edges. And you want to take that adhesive from score line to score line. So again, fold these in. And I want to match up the corners with that back panel. So if I want, I'm going to try and pull this off gently just a wee bit and try that again. Sometimes it's helpful to put your hand inside and pull that flap away from the back panel to begin so that you can get things perfectly lined up on that corner. There. And I forgot to put adhesive along that top, so I'm just going to go in there with my multi-purpose glue and do that. If you're using multi-purpose glue, after you've adhered the pieces, lay it flat and just use your hand to smooth all that out and press everything in place until that glue dries. All right, so there's my box. Now, it can be a little bit flimsy because we know that our um, designer series paper is not as thick and sturdy as a cardstock is. So what I've done is, where's my little piece? Here it is. I have cut a piece of 
um, basically cardboard. It's a thin cardboard, almost like a poster board. And this is what comes in the back of the designer series paper packs. I save these after I use my use up designer series paper. I save these because they come in handy for many different things. And this is one of those things. So this is two and a half by 12 inches. And I'm going to put some score lines in this. Now I want this to be the bottom. I want this to be what's tucked in, okay? And I'm actually gonna put my score lines on that side because they will fold up better doing that. I'm going to score at three inches. And then I'm going to score at nine inches. Now to make sure it's a good fit and that these flaps are not sticking up beyond the edges, side edges of my box, I'm going to cut off just a smidgen. And when I say smidgen, I'm talking tiny bit, maybe a 16th of an inch, not more than eighth of an inch for sure, but just a teeny tiny little bit. I just want to make sure that I don't have this insert sticking up higher than the designer series paper on each side. Before I adhere it, I'm actually just going to push it down inside. It should fit snugly, so use your fingers to push it down into the corners and it looks like a perfect fit. Look at um, what it's like on my edges here. They match right up. If I had not cut off that smidgen on each end, it's likely that some of that white cardboard would be showing. So now I'm just going to put some glue in the bottom of my box. You can see it's not a whole lot. And I'm also going to put some along the top of those side edges. It doesn't have to be a lot, just enough to hold this in place. We don't want it to move around. When you feel it's all snug and flat on the bottom, go ahead and push those sides together. And now my box is going to be a lot sturdier, okay? Not nearly as flimsy. And there's my box. Now, a couple things you can do let me find here. We have our trio punch with that corner rounder. I'm going to round the corners of my flaps. And yes, you could do this before you actually put the box together. But it works just fine if you decide to do it later because we have not here adhered the lid and we have plenty of room to put it into the punch. Now when you put something in the box and close this up, you you can use a, you know, keep the flap on the front, maybe use a little magnet or a velcro um, or, you know, you could put a button there and put some uh, baker's twine around it or you can simply fold the flap into the inside of the box like that. Either way works. On this one, I kept the flap on the outside of the box. On this one, I'm just going to tuck it right inside. And let me see, I have this ribbon. what happened to my black glittered organdy ribbon. Not even sure I had enough to wrap all the way around, but that would have been great bow too. If you want a punch of color, you can use a colorful ribbon as well. 
but I'm going to go ahead and use those. I don't, well, I'm not sure if I'd lump it that with this print. You know what? I have some retired, now retired, um, 2000, let me see, 2020 to 2022 in color. I'm going to use this as a punch, a punch of color. This is Magenta Madness. And to go around this box and make a nice bow, it's probably going to take, oh, maybe 20 to 24 inches. I'm just kind of eyeballing it. I'm going to tie and I'm going to let this hang because now I want to make my tag and I want to be able to pull the, the uh, ribbon through the hole in my tag. So let's do this. I'm using one of the dies from the tailored tag, tailor made tags die collection. You have two different shapes and you get four sizes of each. And you might have heard me say this before, but I think this is my new favorite die set. It's just so versatile um, and can work for many, many, many of our sentiments and even images. If you'd rather have an image on the tag. And these tags don't just have to be tags either. You can use them on card fronts as well. I have that. And I'm going to emboss this with the word celebrate. And I'm going, going to use silver embossing folder. So I'm wiping it with my embossing buddy. Um, we no longer sell these, but I'm sure you can buy them at a craft store or Amazon. Um, but this just takes away the static from the paper so that the embossing powder only sticks where we want it. We don't have any stray um, flecks of embossing powder. I'm inking up my stamp with Versamark ink. It's sticky and it's tacky and it's clear. But if I move it around in the light, I can see that it's there. But just keep in mind, it is clear. So now I'm going to add my embossing powder. I want to make sure I get it on all parts of that word. If there's, if it looks like some areas need a little bit more, just go back in and pick up some more of that embossing folder. Be sure you don't have any stray powder. Move this out of the way. And so I don't get my fingers too hot. I'm using this um, clothespin. And now it's time to heat that embossing powder. Just kind of hold it in place, moving it ever so slightly. And once you see that powder begin to melt, then you can move it on down the word or whatever it is you're embossing. And that looks pretty good. I usually go over it again, just quickly like that, to be sure I didn't miss any spots. But it should all look shiny. It's not wet. It dries so, so quickly. But it should all look shiny. If it doesn't, if some areas look powdery, that means you haven't hit that spot with the heat long enough. Um, it does happen quickly but I always like to move it around and make sure I see all the shininess 
before I um, decide for sure that I'm finished with the heat tool. So now I'll bring my box with the ribbon wrapped around it back in. Just tie it once like that. And then I'm going to pull this end through the tag. It's been a while since we've done heat embossing during a Facebook Live, but I love how this silver embossing looks with black and white. Now, at the beginning of this demonstration, I mentioned some ways um, I might use the box or some things I might include in this, put in this gift box. Do you have some ideas of how you would use the gift box? I'm sure the possibilities are endless. I know that together we can think of so many, 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 many different uses. I could use an extra set of hands here to help me tie that bow. I don't try not to tie it too tight because obviously my box is empty right now and I will want to use this, perhaps for a birthday or graduation gift or maybe just um, a girl's night, maybe celebrating friendships or <laughs> celebrating the fact that we can get together in person without wearing masks. I know we still need to be um, somewhat careful, but there is something freeing about many of these mask orders and other restrictions being lifted lately. So I think that looks very pretty. I'm just gonna make sure that's centered on my box. And then I'm gonna trim the ends of my ribbon. Oh, I like that black and white with the pop of color. And I get to use up some of my retired ribbon. The Magenta Madness color is not retired however this ribbon is. And there you have it. A really kind of simple, but yet um, elegant and special looking gift box. Alrighty, so what do you think? Give me some hearts or thumbs up if you like the project tonight. And tell me how you would use these fun gift boxes. In fact, you know what? I have a couple of girlfriends coming this weekend. Um, just spending the weekend at my house. Um, we're going to do some crafting. Maybe we'll go out to eat or a little shopping. I'm not sure. But they're mainly coming for a craft weekend. Um, and it might be nice to put some surprises or treats, cookies, something like that um, in these and have them at their craft table down here in my Stampin' Studio to welcome them. So I did see some hearts and thumbs up. I appreciate that. I still am not seeing your comments, so I'm sure hoping that they show up once I've um, finished the Facebook Live because I do like to be able to interact with you and this seems a little bit strange that I'm not seeing any comments because I feel like I'm alone here and talking to myself, but I know I'm not, though. I know there are many of you watching. Um, that's all I have for tonight. So um, happy hump day. We're halfway through this week. It's a rainy week in central Ohio, but um, nonetheless, my grass and my flowers are loving the rain, and I've got a super busy week. Um, trying to get out Clasticos, a bingo event. Um, what else did I have? In color clubs, I sent out two classes to go last week. So it's been a little busy, 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 but um, uh, you know, I can always sit on my front porch for some fresh air on these rainy days, but um, I don't feel quite as bad working such long hours and long days when it's a real rainy week. Have a wonderful evening, and I look forward to sharing a fun fold with you on Friday's Facebook Live 
at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time Friday. Um, have a great evening. Thanks for joining me. Bye-bye.